then I'll switch to the other phase. There we go again. Hey everyone, this is Devin Sheets with Alpha Sound, and today I want to talk to you about a little trick that I've been working on. I haven't finalized it, I'm still tweaking on it. Maybe, uh, undoubtedly, you'll have some opinions about it. I'd love to hear them. What I'm trying to do is uh, eliminate the so-called phantom center effect that you get when you have two sound sources spread out by a couple of feet, right? So when you're standing in the middle, all the frequencies phase relationships line up at zero, and you get this nice stacking effect. When you move off to the side, it gets really destructive sounding, kind of this wishy sound, especially when you play pink noise, until you get off to kind of one side or the other, and then it smooths out as you move around left to right. I want to bring the experience of what happens off to the sides over toward the middle so that that can define the entire left-right experience and it can really smooth out that that uh, frequency response. But uh, first let's take a look at some frequency graphs to kind of get a handle on what we're talking about. So we can see here that between 63 and 500 Hertz we have an omnidirectional response that slowly starts to build some lobes as we go higher in the frequency range. There's a few lobes that's just the physics of having two sources separated by a few feet. We can't really do much about it. In fact, we want to maintain most of what's going on here because we want the, the maximum output in this range. This is such a difficult range for smaller speakers to handle, and we don't want to be messing with the phase relationship too much because it'll just result in less output. And we're going to have a lobe you know, somewhere because there's only a few lobes, and so they're going to point in some direction, and we can't completely get rid of them. So we want to leave this range pretty much untouched. The area of interest is what's going on above 1 kilohertz, where the lobing starts to become so frequent and so small, it doesn't even show up in the software. Uh, the software could show you, uh, but it would take a long time to render. I'm not going to do that. Suffice it to say, we have a lot of lobing going on at these higher frequencies, and there's only one spot where all the lobes coalesce into one sort of stack, and that's right in the middle. As you move off to the sides, the relationships between the different lobes at the different frequencies is going to become so scattered that you don't really hear that stacking effect. And what we want to do is get to the point where when you're moving around in the middle between the speakers, you're hearing the effect as if you were off to the sides where it's a lot smoother. So we want to bring that effect to the whole left-right spectrum of the movement and have it be a lot more scattered above one kilohertz. Okay, so I've built myself a little mixer inside the brain of the Yamaha MRX7D processor. And so what I've done is I've taken the input signal and I have let it pass through all the way to one of the speakers. That's where it goes. The other speaker's input signal I've taken, I've split into two sets of signal chains that have different processing and then recombined them and sent them out to that speaker. Now this magnitude and phase graph are looking at the phase and magnitude relationships between the signals going to the two speakers. You can see right now with everything bypassed, uh, just the one signal chain is active, and its magnitude is zero, phase is zero, of course. The first thing we're going to do is add in this delay. I've been testing this for a few hours today, and I found that two milliseconds is kind of a good delay that gets me what I want. And we can see that the magnitude is still zero, but the phase response has now been highly uh, disrupted. It's very scattered above one kilohertz, which is actually what we want but it extends all the way down into kind of your low mid and kind of low bass range here. Uh, and we don't really want that. We want to preserve as much of that range as possible and only have it start scattering above one kilohertz. The only way I could think to do this was to take the signal and actually split it into one section, which is the mid and high frequencies, which receives the delay, and the other, which does not. And so I've got this high pass filter here that I'm going to apply, 48 dB per octave at two kilohertz. And then I'm going to turn on the other part of the signal that has the low pass filter on it. And the low pass filter is also set at two kilohertz, 48 dB per octave. Now, if you're smart and you're thinking ahead, you're going, okay, but you've just combined those and one of them has a delay on it. And that's gonna cause 
some phase, uh, destructive phase relationships that are going to result in a magnitude shift right around the, the crossover point. That's true. It's not that bad, though, so I'm just going to fix it with some EQ. So I've prepared this EQ ahead of time, and let's go ahead and turn that on. And that gets us kind of back to less than one decibel difference uh, in relative magnitude response throughout that entire crossover range. And you know what? That's good enough for me. So here I have a binaural microphone. It's the 3 do FS Pro 2. And it has microphones that are shaped like human ears. So you should hear what I'm hearing. If you put headphones on, we can do a little test here. Sorry the wind is blowing, but this should be the left side. This should be the right side. And I'm going to try to hold it to my forehead when we do the test so that you can really try to hear what I'm hearing. So we have the two Nexo P15s on the ground here, and I'm going to turn on a regular pink noise through both of them so you can hear the normal phase relationship. Okay. So, here we go. Really hear that phasing. Now let's try switching it to the corrected phase. Okay. It's a lot smoother, I think. So I haven't actually used this yet at a show or an installation, but I imagine it being useful uh, for especially stage wedges. Let's say that you've put your microphone right there and you've EQ'd it. You've rung it out so you get a lot of gain and then the lead singer comes up and they grab it and they move and then it feeds back because suddenly you have a really drastically different overall phase response between the frequencies coming from the two speakers that are stacking up in really drastically different ways as you move slightly off to the sides and around in the in the area here and your EQ goes out the window or you're constantly fighting it it's it's whack-a-mole well if you use this technique you could potentially get a lot more overall gain out of your microphone because it doesn't really matter where you position the microphone when you're trying to ring it out um, the phase responses are so scattered that it's kind of the same everywhere, and so um, no particular frequencies are sticking out uh, in any particular spot. And also it affects the sound of the monitors in a positive way, I think. So far, just listening to it, they sound wider. Um, you don't really have this, you know, really stacking up of the sound right in the middle as opposed to being slightly off to the sides. It's a much more consistent, smooth sound no matter where you are. But let's, uh, let's take a look at that first issue about the gain before feedback. So next I thought I would try using a microphone. Check, check, check. And pass it in front of the speakers and see how much gain before feedback we get. So here's first with the normal phase. And then I'll switch to the other phase. Here we go again. It's a lot better. And then also I imagine these going into an install in a building where they're in the ceiling shooting down at the audience and overall you're going to have a consistent uh, tone, a sonic character to the speaker system. Uh, let's say they're in a like a center cluster in a building um, meant to be paired with a left and a right array or something like this. Something I should add here is that this probably only works when the speakers are just a few feet apart from each other because you can't go slapping this on your left-right arrays at your gig because 
the distance is so great between them that the amount of delay you'd have to add uh, is so much that it would start to sound like an actual delay effect, right? So, um, you know, if your speakers are 50 feet apart, you'd have to add, you know, 20 milliseconds of delay maybe to get the same effect, and that's going to sound goofy. So two milliseconds, eh, that's not so bad. We don't really start to hear delay as an actual effect until it's above five or 10 milliseconds. Um, and so that's, that's not gonna be too disruptive. It achieves what we want, but it, again, it only works when the speakers are kind of close together like this. So just keep that in mind. As you move around in the venue, your center cluster is gonna sound a lot more consistent. Normally you'd wanna have a center cluster of like a line array that's you know really wide in patterns so that you do have a singular source. But if you can't do that and you have to put two of these up in the ceiling, um, spaced out, you know, then you can actually use this trick to make the tone a lot more consistent in the venue. And you don't have that, that phasey, wishy-washy sound right in the middle and then a totally different tone off to the sides and all that. This kind of fixes that, I think. I'll try it and I'll let you guys know how it works. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe you should give it a try and tell me how it works. Thanks for watching.